On Larry King Now, funny man Bill Hader on being a master impersonator. I live on the lower, lower east side. I'll drink your milkshake. Now, you know, I gotta tell you, my, my roommate's a horse. We are building the new New Orleans. <laughs> wow! On leaving Saturday Night Live. Just became kind of a thing of, um, maybe now's the time to, to go. Plus. So I got to dress up as Three Amigo, and I got to walk into a dressing room, and there's Chevy Chase and Steve Martin dresses the Three Amigos arguing how to do the salute. <laughs> <laughs> That's next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. I am looking forward to this. Emmy-nominated actor and comedian famous for hilarious impersonations on Saturday Night Live. He recently left the show after eight seasons. He stars in the to-do list in theaters now, reprising his role as the voice of Flint Lockwood in the animated feature Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs 2. That's in theaters September 27th. He's Bill Hader. Wow. Hi, Bill. <laughs> Hi, this is, a, this is a big honor. No, my me. honor. <laughs> Tell me first about this this the T-Mobile things. Yeah. You're everywhere in T-Mobile. Yeah. How did this happen for you? I uh, I got a phone call saying, you know, do you want to, you know, you get offered commercials and stuff and you kind of go, well, I don't know. You know, when I first got SNL, I was like, I don't know if I really want to do that or I don't, you know, whatever. And then this thing happens when um, you, the doctor hands you your first baby and you look at the child and you go, I'm, I will do whatever, I will do all, every, <laughs> what do you want me to do, yes. you know? And then they, they said, uh, do you want to do T-Mobile commercials? And um, I said, absolutely, uh, I like T-Mobile. And then they were actually really funny. These oh, guys really these guys from Canada, uh, Adam and Dave, they wrote them and they were really, really good. And you shot them all in one day? You told we basically shot them in one day around uh, the LA Times building and uh, Silver Lake. It was like, and it was 13 spots. And they're running everywhere. Apparently, yes. <laughs> this is the mo probably the most exposure you've ever gotten. I, uh, it really is. <laughs> Saturday yeah, night yeah, yeah. Right on Saturday. No, most people, but most now, people yell out T-Mobile to me now. Was that said out? <laughs> How did you discover Stefan? Um, well, it came from two different places. One was uh, John Mulaney, who co-created that with me. He's a great stand-up, and he used to write at SNL. And he really deserves a lot of credit for Stefan because so much of the, the, the you know, the wordplay in that is him. And um, he had got an email from a guy saying, hey, you should come to this club. This club has everything, like rooms full of broken glass, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> New York's hottest club is Wish or whatever it was called. And um, so he would read out this email to us as a joke. And then I separately... Um, had, would go to this coffee shop in Chelsea every morning, and there was a barista there who kind of talked like that. And he was like, hi, how are you? And he was always telling me about his life. And he, he said, I live on the lower, lower east side. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And I was like, I get it. So I'm with you. doing him. So I'm doing him. So I was doing that around the office. John Mulaney was reading that email, and then John had the the smarts to say, let's combine those. Did anyone think that gays would be offended? I know no. satire is a thin line. Yeah. I, no one, no one was really, uh, no one was really offended that I know of. The nice thing that I heard, actually, I, I've had a couple of, of uh, gay men stop me on the street and say how much they liked it, and that the joke wasn't that he was gay. Necessarily, a lot of times you play. You know, the joke is that he's gay. The joke is really that uh, I think he's on a lot of drugs, <laughs> <laughs> and that um, what he's saying may not uh, be real, <laughs> and that he's bad at his job. You, <laughs> you like know? getting into him. You like. Oh doing yeah. It? yeah. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. And I do kind of to get because I'm a naturally very nervous person, especially doing the live show. I get very kind of amped up, and. Um, and so that character is easy to kind of... Do you rehearse it? Yeah. yeah. I am someone who walks around constantly reading my lines. Really? I'm constantly walking around, just running it and running it and running it. You ever it. crack up the other people around? Has to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When I first did Stefan, you see the cue card guy like this, and then on the other side was Andy Samberg and John just like, ah, just <laughs> laughing and pointing at me. Especially when he changes stuff on the cards to make me, <laughs> to make me laugh. Why did you leave? 
Why did I leave? Well, uh, <laughs> it was a very pragmatic thing, actually. My wife and I, uh, she's a filmmaker, and she was constantly going out to L.A., and I was constantly going out to L.A., and we have two kids, and so it just became kind of a thing of um, maybe now's the time to to go. She and directed was, this film you were in, right? Yeah, the to-do list. That's my wife's movie. And um, so she, we were just always coming out to Los Angeles, and... Uh, I, I, you know, we had a very, very short discussion about me, us living in L.A., but me still trying to do Saturday Night Live, and it was just like, that's impossible. Because you'd have to, it's an impossible I, jump. I can't even move to Brooklyn <laughs> to do Saturday Night Live. Like, I have to basically live right by 30 you Rock. You rehearse a lot. Oh. You're, and you're constantly getting pulled in at, you know, and at all hours. You just a well, very we, unpredictable schedule. You don't have to be on every show, do you? Can't you do appearances? Can't Stefan come back sometimes? Possibly, yes. He will. I, I think he possibly will. Isn't he possible as a character beyond Saturday Night Live? Well... A Stefan sitcom? <laughs> sitcom? I haven't heard that one. People always talk about movie. A Stefan sitcom would actually be pretty great. <laughs> like, do oh, it yeah, like... Stefan uh, sitcom. Yeah, do it multi-camera and it's... Yeah. And he has, like, a normal neighbor and stuff. That's right. And what kind of occupation does he have? <laughs> what would Stefan be? I don't be? think so. Whatever it is, he's bad at it. <laughs> we did have an idea for a, a movie. We were trying to think of an idea. We talked a little bit about an idea for a movie, and then we were kind of like, I don't think it'll work. But we did have one funny scene that was making John and I laugh, which was Stefan coming out to his family. <laughs> and his parents are, like, blue-collar people from the Bronx. <laughs> And he's like, Mom, Dad, you're probably wondering why I haven't gotten married yet. <laughs> <laughs> like, you just haven't met the right girl, that's all. <laughs> Was it, I, I, having, I, I, we did a show once with the cast of Saturday Night Live on the set, and they all would talk about their auditions and how hard that was. Yeah. What was yours like? Uh, I had a weird thing where they came and saw, they saw me uh, in... Uh, we're in L.A. Megan Mullally recommended me. Megan Mullally, Great girl. she's amazing. And Been she, here. She changed my life. She really did change mm. my life. I was just doing a show. Uh, her brother-in-law was in a show with me. She came to see him, and she was like, you're funny. And, and apropos of nothing, I didn't know her, nothing, she called Lauren and said, you should come and see this guy and in Los how, Angeles. And he came and saw you, and that's how you I just came and saw me, and then I came to New York, did a show in New York, and then I did my actual audition, which was terrifying. And no one Bill, lives. Bill Hader, you see him in all the T-Mobile commercials. He's every. If you haven't seen him in T-Mobile commercials, <laughs> you passed away. <laughs> and he he opened September 27th in Cloudy with a chance of meatballs too. We'll talk about some of his most memorable impersonations after this. <laughs> You've passed away. We're back with the brilliant Bill Hader. He's one of my favorite people. He's just really a hysterically funny guy. Do you ever crack up? Do, have you ever watched the show? Yeah, but I'm I, laughing all the time. Yeah, but I mean, I really lose it. <laughs> Completely lose. Oh yeah, constantly. Fred Armisen just has my number. Fred you Armisen. Makes you laugh with hello. Hello, yeah, constantly. When we do the Californians, that sketch. <laughs> Yeah. He constantly won't. He'll never say a line with the same inflection. So on on air, I'm, you know, he's just going, "Hey man, what are you doing?" Like, wait a minute. Like he just does this thing that he knows. I uh, I'm a very soft touch. Were you a man. kid who impersonated people? No, I impersonated Did you family members when you were. Actually, you know what? My wife pointed out that my family, when we talk, no one ever. Uh, we do all the voices of the people in the story. So the whole like, family? The whole, everyone in my family. My sisters, my mom, my mom and my dad. So when they, uh, when they, you know, they'll be, they won't be like, I saw George at the supermarket. They're like, so I went to the supermarket and I saw George. <laughs> you know, he was there. I'm from Oklahoma, everyone. You do an impression. I just, he was just with us, Elliot Spitzer. Oh, yeah. Trying to be controller. How did you get to do him? <laughs> How did you even to think of doing it? I remember when that scandal broke, I walked into the office and everyone was like, Bill, guess who's going to get to do his first cold open? <laughs> <laughs> and it was Jim Downey. It was my first ever saying live from New York. It was, uh, so yeah, they, they 
threw me into that. So and how it, do you find something like Spitzer? You watch him? How yeah, do you I just find watch it? that. I watch that and just try to get his voice. And I'm either I get it immediately or I don't have it at all. Like I kind of I can work on it a little bit and finesse it a little bit, but usually it's like an immediate like I can get it. I've interviewed some of the great impersonators over the years, and some of them have told me it's not so much the voice as the characteristics of the person. Yeah. It is, and I, it's good to watch them being interviewed instead of them acting Speaking or something. Speech. Yeah, the Al Pacino one came from him to giving an ex uh, Emmy acceptance speech, and he was just kind of being. How's himself. he? Play? Give me. Like, wow. Uh, thank you so much for uh, having me here. This is great. Like it was just very like, all right. <laughs> wow. And then like, you know, he was like, we. I think I did a thing about him. Uh, my first thing was yeah, it was like. Uh, it was Anderson Cooper. It was my first line, I think, ever in an SNL was Anderson Cooper was doing a thing about Hurricane Katrina. I said, uh, and it was Al Pacino helping build a, a house. And I said, Anderson, we are building the new New Orleans. <laughs> we will put the doors wherever we want. <laughs> what? And that was my first line Al's a, on SNL. Al's a good friend. He's, I see him a lot. We live a couple blocks apart. You do him perfectly. Oh, thank you very much. Stefan married uh, Anderson, right? There. Uh, he was going to marry oh, yeah. Anderson Cooper, uh, and then Seth came in and, and swept him away. Spoiled it away. Yeah. You also do someone no one does. I know him pretty well. Who in the world does Alan Alda? Um, well, I did Alan Alda, but I tell you, this guy, uh, this British comedian, Peter Serafinowicz, I thought, oh, I did Alan Alda, and then Peter Serafinowicz does a really good Alan Alda. But, uh, How do you, what is that? I don't, Alan Alda, I got that from Crimes and Misdemeanors, that movie, and just great. watching oh, it, I love when it. he kills us, his girlfriend oh, kills. so funny. Well, initially, we wrote Alan Alda into a thing. So, uh, William Shatner was in that show called, uh, I, I, S, uh, S blank, my dad says, you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah. And so we were gonna do a similar thing when Alan Alda called my, my effing roommate is a horse. <laughs> And it was Alan Alda and his roommate was a sitcom. So how does he and sound? He was like, well, you know, I gotta tell you, my, my roommate's a horse. I mean, what, <laughs> what, what, this, is, this is insanity. <laughs> got manure in my, my bed. Oh, thank you very much. And, uh, you know, this is great. This is great. I love your horse. Have people like told you, have, they, have Pacino ever spoken to you? No, I saw him once and was too afraid to... Why would you be afraid? He's a regular guy. <laughs> He's Al Pacino. <laughs> <laughs> He's terrifying. <laughs> he really isn't. No, what was it like being directed by your wife? It was great. It was a shorthand to it. Uh, you know, I kind of knew what the tone she wanted for a movie. Um, it was awesome. It was a weird thing where she, uh, she had to direct me in a sex scene with Rachel Bilson, which was yeah, totally how awkward. It was a little awkward, but a lot of the crew were like, your wife is very nice that she's letting you have a sex scene with someone who looks like Rachel Bilson. And she kind of was looking at me too, like, you're welcome. You're welcome. Sex <laughs> scenes are hard to shoot though, aren't they? Because yeah. there's, 50, there's 50 people around, right? Yeah, and this was even a sex scene that was just played for comedy. It wasn't even like a for real sex scene. I don't get asked to do that a lot. <laughs> I'm usually the guy walking in on the sex scene and being like, whoa, excuse me, I'm sorry. <laughs> Is your wife funny? Yes, she's very funny. She's a very funny writer, and and uh, she does a lot of stuff at the uh, UCB Theater. She's an improv actor. And... Tell me about Flint Lockwood. Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs 2. The first one was a big hit, right? Yeah. So it's yeah. not about... Is voiceovers different? Yeah. A different form. I've done a few. I did Shrek, three yeah. Shreks, and I did, of course, the B-movie with yeah. Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah. It's acting. Yeah. You move. What do you find... Uh, difficult or different about it? I, I find it, I, it can be very difficult. It's kind of exhausting. That was a thing I wasn't expecting because especially as Flint Lockwood, I'm yelling all my lines. It's the thing I always give is like, Bill, that's great, but it's a little more energy. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you're like, ah. and you just, and you say the same line 80 times, like with 80 different Are you in the studio on. alone? Yeah, and you never get to act with anybody. Correct, they don't, they were alone. Yeah. Which I was shocked strange. at that. Yeah, it was very strange. Pixar, I'm doing these two Pixar movies. They will be in the room with you, the writers at least, and it's a little bit more of a back and forth. We're like, hey, maybe you say, you know, people are pacing around, and then everybody goes, shut up, shut up, everybody be quiet. And then you do your line, and they go, great, great, great. Okay, now, you know. Um, but most of it, you're just, in a, you're just in a studio going like this. More with the brilliant Bill Hader. There's no other way to describe him. Right after this. Thank you. 
We're back with Bill Hader. He's left Saturday Night Live. He's in the... He's reprising his role as Flint Lockwood in Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs open September 27th. He's in the to-do list directed by his wife. He's in the T-Mobile commercial scene everywhere. In other words, he is ubiquitous. He is everywhere. Bill Hader is in your life, whether you like it or not. He's also going to be the voice of directions in your car. Yeah. <laughs> you went too fast. You'd be great for that. I don't know that. Left. Left! <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> Left! <laughs> Moron. Would you ever like to do serious work? Yeah. I actually... Uh, I'm in a movie. Uh, I actually did two independent dramas last uh, last year. One is called The Skeleton Twins, which is with Kristen Wiig. Um, I love. Her. She's terrific. She's amazing. And so, but it's a very dramatic movie where we play uh, est uh, estranged twins who uh, end up living with each other. And uh, and then a movie called The Disappearance of Eleanor Rigby with uh, James uh, McAvoy and Jessica Chastain. Based on the Beatles song. Yeah, that's has yeah she, the character's name is Eleanor Rigby. Yeah, but it's it was. Do great. you like doing? Comics usually are very good at serious work because yeah. comedy is serious. It is. That's for you. It's it's not that funny if you're trying to be funny. You have to. That's uh. That's kind of like the big rule, you know. It's. Uh, I always think of. I, I was in the movie Super Bad, and there was a scene in the movie where I walk in on this, the character McLovin with a girl, and he ran away from me or whatever, and I get mad, and I was doing it really funny, and the director Greg Matola came over to me. He's like, Bill. That's your best friend, and he ran out on you. Like, play it serious. And so I came in and I played it totally serious, and like everyone was on the floor. You know what I mean? Everyone <laughs> was laughing, the boom was coming in. So I was like, what is the matter with you? Why'd you do that? Like, why'd you do that, man? You know, but it was like this little nerdy kid with this girl in bed. And uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's a good lesson. Was Saturday Night Live fun or work? Or both? Both, yeah. It was very, uh, for me, it was very nerve wracking. And then when it, after it was done, it was a, like, it was a combination of feeling very relieved and uh, you really accomplished something. What's it like, and no one's perfect, when the skit doesn't work and you know it's really not working? Oh, uh, it's terrible. I mean, hopefully you get that in dress, like at the dress rehearsal, something bombs really bad and you're able to kind of go, uh, okay, that didn't work. Thank, you know, thank God everyone won't see that. But... You know, uh, sometimes it does happen. I learned over the years that Will Ferrell did a sketch that is only a, a dress rehearsal sketch where he played Gabe Kaplan, and it, <laughs> it plays to total silence. And I remember Amy Poehler showed me that sketch when I first show, started at SNL, and she's like, when things aren't going well, watch this. And it is playing to total silence, and he just digs in and takes his time and just does it, 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 You just see it switch in his head where he's like, I'm doing this for me, you know? And, he, and it, it is just... Great, and it's so, great, and that's what you do, and I always think, oh, yeah, just commit. You know? The hardest part in any comedic life is when they don't laugh, right? Oh, yeah. You just go... It's interminable. Oh, yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> do you think now you've got it made? No. I don't think I'll ever think I'll no? have it made. No? No, I just, I don't, yeah. I hope I never feel like I have it made. You just want to keep working and, you know, just keep moving forward and... Just you know, trying new things and because you're so funny, like, is there a tendency to think you're typecast, even though you got these two serious films coming? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that can happen. That can happen definitely. I mean, I don't. I really don't know because I haven't. I mean, I don't know if I'm typecast. I just kind of like. I just like accept things like, you know, uh, would I watch that and I'll go do it. You know, whether it's a drama or comedy or the T-Mobile commercials, which I know I made the joke about the baby thing, but. It is true. When I read them, I'm like, these are really funny. I, yeah, I want to do these. So. When, when, the, when you left uh, Saturday Night Live, was there a departing night, a day, where you said goodbye? Um, well, I said, I said I was leaving. I told Lauren I was leaving in February, so I had a while to kind of have it. But there really wasn't. We did that last um, Stefan sketch. Uh, when he runs off to Anderson. When he runs off to Anderson Cooper, and then we came back in, and we were married and everything. And then the next sketch I was in was where I was playing a cop, uh, an old cop, um, and uh, I ran, and they, you know, and they took off the Stefan shirt and wig, and it just, went, and it just whisked away. 
That was it. That was it. And I was like, oh, oh, oh. Okay. No goodbye, Bill. No yeah, party. No, that, no was cake. Like, that was it. Nothing. No, no. Uh, well, uh, Tina Fey actually sent us a cake at our last read through, and uh, that was very sweet. And uh, for me and Fred, and uh, and then because uh, uh, I think Jason was still on the fence. Um, and uh, but yeah, that was very sweet. And the band, the Flaming Lips, came and played us a song. That's at nice. our last, our last read through, that was very emotional, actually. Why was Saturday Night Live what it was? Um, it still is. I mean, it's kind of. I mean, no one is. It's. It's. Uh, there's nothing really like it in show business. I mean, it's pure show business. You can learn so much, and just it's the best entry level job in the show business because in a week. You go through all the emotions that everyone, you know, you're auditioning with your sketch, you read that you're creating something, you're writing something, you're, you're communicating with people, all that stuff, and your thing bombs, or you'll have a giant hit, and then the next week it, you have a bomb, and so it keeps you just humble and working and still trying to figure it out. And it's the network's most successful show. Yeah. <laughs> but I think, I mean, I think it is. It just keeps reinventing itself, and it always stays relevant and Lauren Michaels is really smart and has a good eye for He's talent. a genius. He really yeah. is. He's yeah. Will will play a game of if you only knew next. Bill Hader, by the way, who failed to mention, is Emmy-nominated actor and comedian for the hilarious impersonations on Saturday Night Live. How do you feel about that? It's great. You'll we'll go really to the good. Emmys, of course. Yeah, yeah. They might make you the favorite. Who do you think is your stiffest competition? Oh, I mean, it's last year is Modern Family, and it's probably this year is all the Modern Family guys. Yeah. yeah. I think Ed O'Neill's a good, good. Uh, he's, he, yeah. he's great. I love him. Yeah. Uh, I'm predicting you're going to win, okay? Hey, I've been right <laughs> three out of ten times. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I've been asked you about, your wardrobe seems to consist mainly of plaid shirts. We have some pictures, by the way. Oh, good. That was just two days ago. <laughs> do you feel strongly about plaid like I do about suspenders? Yeah. Is it, is it part of you? Is it part of you? Like, you're not wearing plaid today. I know. I'm, I'm wearing a shirt with uh, but stain. It's a stain on it. But the stain cost a lot of money. To put on, it's an affected it's stain, an affected right? You did stain. that deliberately. I, yeah, no, this is an Italian shirt. Why didn't you wear plaid today? Um, I don't know. I, I don't really think, basically, my short answer is I pay no attention to what I put on I when I leave. It. I'm from Oklahoma, and it's just, that's what you wear. Yeah, who cares? In Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah, Oklahoma. Where in Oklahoma? Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oh, well, at least that's big. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is it true? <laughs> Where the wind comes sweeping down the plains and the waving wheat can sure smell sweet. I love Oklahoma. <laughs> As Mel Brooks would say, Tulsa? Tulsa? <laughs> Is it what? true that there's a Tumblr blog dedicated to buying you new clothes? Yes. It's called Let's Buy Bill Hader Some New Clothes. Yes, that's true. I and think do they pick clothes for you? No, they just, it's a, just basically just a big piece of advice to me. Ryan okay. Seacrest picks out my jeans. He does? Yeah, he didn't like the jeans I used to wear, and he sends me jeans. He does? Yeah. <laughs> does that impress you? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Ryan's uh, Ryan's jealous of Bill because Bill's on TV more than he is. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know how to. I don't know if you're having a good time, but we are. I don't. Okay. All right. We have some social media questions oh. for you. Addison Seven H tweets: Dear Mr. Hater, is there an impression you wish you could do but find too difficult? Ironically, I uh, I cannot do. Uh, Christopher Walken, which everyone can do Christopher Some Walken. Some people do him. I, yes. and, yeah, yeah, he's like a guy that everyone does, and I... Kizzy Kim tweeted, what's your most embarrassing Saturday Night Live moment? Well, one moment I felt terrible was Kristen Wiig and I were doing a sketch with, uh, where we used to do this thing called, uh, uh, I forget what it is, but we were uh, two people um, interviewing uh, Jennifer Lopez, and Jennifer Lopez says something, and I was supposed to spit something in Kristen's face, like I was supposed to do a big spit take into her face, and at dress, it worked perfectly. It was perfect, got a big laugh, everything. And on air, I like went to do it and I fully missed her. And it was just silence. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't even know how to rebound off of it. I just kind of was like, that didn't work. <laughs> so when you watch it, they actually put dress on the air. Uh, Shishkrum asks, were you intimidated to work on Saturday Night Live? Yeah, 
It's terrifying. First night, what was the first thing you did? Uh, that uh, Al Pacino thing. Uh, but when you walk into SNL just to audition, they have a, uh, on 17, they have a giant wall of every single cast member. And you walk by that on your way. Oh, that. your That'll grab you. <laughs> and you're like, all oh, right. Wonka Chu okay. wants to know what's the one thing you're absolutely terrified of? Uh, I, I mean, going, like, getting up in front of people and performing is pretty hard for me. We end the show with a game called If You Only Knew. Just quick questions. What's your weirdest pre show ritual? Uh, I, I eat a, a Cliff Bar and I drink two uh, espresso shots. What do you do after the show, right after the show? I, I go home and I sleep and then I'm immediately woken up by both my kids. Favorite impersonation, do you have a favorite? Uh, I liked doing Alan Alda and I liked uh, doing Daniel Plainview from There Will Be Blood, the There Will Be Blood guy. Oh, the uh, Daniel Day-Lewis. Yeah, yeah. How do you do him? I'm trying to remember how I did him. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Daniel Day-Lewis, hot. Huh? That was a great movie. I'll drink your milkshake. Yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> like I, Do you have a favorite SNL moment? I had a crazy moment last year where uh, uh, Justin Timberlake hosted and all the original people came back for this five-timer club. Steve Martin, Dan Aykroyd, Chevy Chase, everybody. Well, Martin Short couldn't be there for the dress rehearsal. He could only be there for the air. And they had uh, uh, the three amigos introduce Justin Timberlake, his second music act. So Lauren said, Bill, would you like to be the third three amigo? to introduce the thing. Wow. So I got to dress up as Three Amigo and I got to walk into a dressing room and there's Chevy Chase and Steve Martin dresses the Three Amigos arguing how to do the salute. <laughs> 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 and they had to, when they were looking at it, he's like, no, 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 Chevy, it's this. And Chevy was like, no, 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 it was this. And then they got out a phone and watched it on YouTube. Wow. And that was pretty awesome. What other quick thing? You remember the first girl you kissed back in Tulsa? Yes. What was her name? Uh, Jennifer Dennis. And it was, she had to stand on a rock to kiss me because I was very tall. Was How old were you? Sweet. I was three years old. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever <laughs> happened to her? I don't know. Whatever no. happened to her? I don't know what happened to her. She was very nice. But I was, uh, no, I was probably 12. And uh, she, was very, she was very nice. And it was Wait. very, it was like Norman Rockwell-ish. She was very sweet. I mean, she stood on a rock. She stood on a rock. That's so nice. Yeah, it was a very Tulsa moment. <laughs> hey, you don't stand on a rock in Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bill, you'll see him on Cloudy with the Chance of Meatball September 27th. Wish him luck at the Emmys. I predict he wins, and I've been right, as I said. Okay. Three out of ten. Yeah. Thanks to my guest, the very funny Bill Hader. You, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things. <laughs>